Hello friends, Kerrigan Skelly with Pinpoint Evangelism here with you today, just doing a little shopping, and Lord put something on my heart, actually for a couple days now, I just haven't had a chance to put it down to video form to share with you all, but um, let's talk about the coronavirus. How bad is it? How serious is it? There is some who would have you believe it's the worst thing that's happened maybe since the Spanish flu. Um, others think it will have you believe it's no worse than the seasonal flu. And this information we're getting from these different sources ranges from governments to mainstream media uh, to secular uh, non-Christian scientists. So everything that's uh, given to us from those sources must be taken with a grain of salt. Uh, we don't just believe what people are saying because they say it. We know in the last days pestilences will come. And the question becomes, this is a real pestilence. Some people have you believe that the Chinese government did this on purpose. They released it on purpose. Um, others would have you believe that the higher ups and all the governments in the world want to do some uh, population control. You know, I don't know the facts about those things. I don't know if that, that's really what's going on or not. It doesn't really make a difference to me at this point. I think this is pretty serious. The rate it's spreading, the rate at which people are dying, the percentage of people who, get, who contract it, who actually die, um, and the way it's spreading and how you can have it for so long without having any symptoms of it, how few people are being tested. So realistically, people could be walking around and have this uh, this virus for a long time and not even know it. be spread it to so many people and they don't even know they have it. And no one's getting tested until they have symptoms. So you don't know who has it until they actually have symptoms. So it's, it's very dangerous. Lots of unknown things regarding this virus. Uh, how bad it is. Uh, how long it'll last. There's even been some reports people have had it. Have been cleared they didn't have it anymore and then it came back the question becomes did it go into dormancy within their body and come back again or did they recontract as different strands of it as well so it's very dangerous but when it comes to followers of Jesus Christ how should we respond to things like this number one do not fear God has not given us a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind so that's the first thing do not fear Number two, don't panic, which is very similar to fear. But don't panic. Don't become anxious. You know, stay in prayer. Stay in the Word. Stay close to Jesus. This doesn't surprise God that this is happening. It doesn't surprise Him. He'll take care of His people. Now, he can very well protect His people and let them get anything. Similar to the people of Israel in the land of Goshen, when all the plagues came upon the Egyptians and how nothing touched the Israelites. The tenth plague, when all the firstborn were killed, but the, the Israelites had the blood of the lamb on the doorpost and lentils of their house. So God can very well protect us in this situation. But if we were to contract it, God can heal us. And in the midst of us contracting it, God can protect us and use us to reach people who are around us who would not be around us unless we had been in situations like that and contracted it. And worst case scenario, even if a believer were to contract it and die, listen, death has lost its sting. Do you really believe that? Has death lost its sting for you? Or is it just uh, still a mild sting to you? What I mean by that is are you still holding on to this world? The point of living in this world is to make it to the next. The point of living in this world is to persevere to the end. And so if you persevere to the end and you die because of the coronavirus, well, praise God. Made it to the end. That's been your goal all along anyway. So you need to make sure we're not holding on to this world. Uh, so we're not going to pack. You know, the Bible says that people's hearts fail them for fear because of things coming upon this world in the last days. And so pestilences will come. It doesn't say how they'll come. will be the source they come. Well, it's a government doing it on purpose. With some higher ups who control all the world governments are doing it on purpose. Where it's evil, wicked scientists. Uh, whatever it is, whoever is the source of it, obviously God is allowing it to come to pass. God could wipe it out right now if he wanted to. So we 
need to make sure that we're staying in the Word, staying in prayer, and not keep, not being fearful, not panicking, realizing if we truly are following Jesus, death has lost its sting. We need to act like it. You know, we can say things verbally with our mouths, doctrinally speaking, about what we believe. And then when the when it comes to the where the rubber meets the road, do we really believe that? Do we really believe that death has lost its sting? Practically speaking, does do we act does does the fruit of that doctrine come forth in our lives? That's the question you must ask yourself in the midst of these situations. If you're getting anxious, you're being fearful, you're panicking, you're not staying close enough to the Lord and prayer and reading the word enough because that is not the Holy Spirit inside of you causing you to fear and be panic. He doesn't give us a spirit if you remember. Power, love, sound mind. That's what God gives us. So we didn't have a sound mind. We need to be the people who are at peace during these situations so we can be a witness to others. Not just with our mouths, which we're supposed to be doing that as well, but witness with our life and that we're not going to be prone to fear. And that we're still going to be witness, witnesses for Jesus in the midst of these situations. So those are some points I wanted to share with you. And then lastly, I want to share with you that you should probably prepare in other ways as well. To be wise. I'm not talking about being a prepper. Uh, as that word is defined, as I understand it, you know, storing up months and months and years and years of food and digging in the ground and living off grid. Although, living off grid having extra fruit supply is not necessarily a bad thing, but that shouldn't be our focus. Our primary focus is Jesus and this gospel. That's our primary focus. But we should also be wise as well. There's nothing wrong with being prudent and wise. This is something the scripture talks about. So we ought to be prudent and wise. Personally, I'm going to be getting some food. I actually already have gotten some food, some non-perishable things. In case something happens and we go into quarantine and can't go to the store, um, I would encourage you, if you have land, to think about growing food on your land. Something as simple as chickens where you can have eggs and later on have meat or raise both meat chickens and, and egg-laying chickens or goats or pigs or you know, whatever you can do on your own land. Maybe you'll have a big garden where you can grow tomatoes and green peppers and have a greenhouse you can maybe grow year-round have a water source on your property, like a, a water well or you know, a creek or a pond on your property, develop those things. There's nothing wrong with being prudent, uh, being watchful, and uh, you know, as men who have families, taking care of our families in that way. And so it's good to be wise in a situation, but not to panic and not to be solely or completely or primarily focused on such things, because God is going to take care of us. If we seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, God is going to take care of us. To give us everything we need. You know, if the birds of the air have a place to lay their head, they have food to eat, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from my master's uh, notice, then he, we're much much more valuable than that. Than those, those creatures. Or the grass. Or the flowers. And so God will provide for us food, clothing, shelter, drink. Uh, but we need to make sure that we're, we're taking care of these things as much as depends upon us as we can. So if that makes sense, um, once again, there's balance in that. Not trying to be a prepper and focus on that. Not lose your focus. Take your eyes off of Jesus. Take your eyes off of the gospel and sharing with others. And put your eyes on all the garbage, all the stuff going on around us. No. Jesus told us these things were going to happen ahead of time. And for good reason. Not to make us fearful. So we know that he loves us and he cares for us. I mean, if, I've, if I want to show love to, to one of my children and they're about to do something new that they've never done before, I'm going to take time to repair them. I'm going to instruct them. I'm going to warn them about bad things that can possibly happen. I'm going to teach them little trip, uh, uh, tips and tricks about how to handle situations um, and how to be wise. And God gives us information for the same kind of reasons. So praise the Lord in all things. We praise the Lord for the coronavirus that we can go through these times. We, it was God's will that we live during these times and we're around during these times and we need to, to be joyful about these things in the midst of this kind of affliction. 
and let's make sure, friends, we're being a witness that we're not uh, that we're allowing God to use this virus um, with our lives in our mouths to preach the gospel to others. Because listen, people are thinking about death. I mean, and for the most part, America up to now, most people aren't thinking about it real hard. They're kind of just blowing it off. They want to just go on with their lives as nothing's happening, but something is happening. I think it's something pretty serious. And eventually, people are going to catch on. And when they do, there'll probably be lots of panic, lots of fear. And we need to come in the midst of that. People are thinking about death, thinking about what happens after death, thinking about their lives and how they've lived it so far, and speak to them about Jesus and eternity and death. Amen? So let's be faithful witnesses during this time. No matter what time we're living in, whether we're in a country where we're being persecuted, whether we're in America, we're at freedom, listen, freedom of speech, we're going through the coronavirus, whatever it is we're going through, let's be faithful witnesses of Jesus. Amen? God bless you.